Hello, my name is Roman Nevshupa and uh, it's my pleasure to present our recent results in the study of tribochemical processes through the analysis of tribemission of gases. Uh, this, uh, this presentation will be focused on the application of our new methodology on advanced liquid and solid lubricants. And this work was done in collaboration with my colleagues from Autonomous University of Madrid, Spain, and from various universities from Medellin, Colombia. First of all, I would like to acknowledge the collaboration from João Mecaro and uh, Anton Rusanov for preparation and characterization of DLC samples and also funding obtained from various uh, projects. This project, uh, this uh, presentation will consist of four main parts. In the first part, I will briefly explain the state of the art mm, in accessing almost inaccessible interfaces. In the second part I will talk about gas driver emission, the fundamentals of uh, this phenomenon. In the third part I will uh, discuss the operandi characterization of turbochemical processes, the, new, the, recent, the recent advances in uh, the methodology of uh, using mass spectrometry for characterization of turbochemical processes. And finally, I will show several case studies where this met methodology was applied for studying DLC coatings, ionic liquids, and composite friction modifier. Since very beginning of the tribology, uh, uh, tribology studies, it was a desire of all researchers to understand what really happens in the interface. And not uh, until the 90s of the 20th century it was possible when the, uh, the new techniques were developed allowing to characterize the uh, interfaces and contact surfaces in situ, on site and even in operando. Uh, among these uh, techniques it should be mentioned the virtually in situ uh, environment technique development developed uh, in Lyon in the laboratory of tribology and system dynamics, which includes both uh, the, tri the tribological chamber and the characterization chamber. So the sample can be rubbed in vacuum and then transferred to the characterization chamber when it can be characterized. This is not really in situ measurement since the sample should be transferred, but uh, this can be done without taking the sample uh, to the atmosphere. So the tribologic tribal surfaces can be conserved without oxidation, without contact with water and oxygen from the atmosphere. However, this technique uh, doesn't allow to measure the processes really in the, on the site and uh, uh, during uh, during the experiment. Later on, uh, various uh, really in situ and operando techniques were developed, and this includes, uh, for example, EXAS uh, technique, which uses monochromatic uh, beam of uh, X-ray radiation to illuminate to irradiate the sample surface uh, inside in inside in the vacuum tribometer so it can be it, it can be possible to obtain chemical information from the contact surfaces just on the site uh, where the friction experiment was done and the most advanced technique uh, including FTIR, Raman, Synchrotron, Xanis, Electrochemical, Digital Holography and other allows measurement the processes directly on the interface during friction but the, these techniques require that one of the samples which uh, are in contact should be transparent for the uh, radiation uh, which is used for a certain technique. So this technique cannot be used uh, freely, freely for all types of interfaces. This, only, uh, this technique is only suitable for uh, laboratory characterization of some certain processes which can be characterized using this uh, transparent materials or, or window disk. 
but uh, what about the real situation or uh, real material um, uh, combinations which usually are metals or ceramics which are not transparent for the selected uh, wave uh, wavelengths so what can we do to characterize uh, friction and wear on real interfaces which are really buried into the uh, in, in, in and very difficult to access unfortunately only very limited number of techniques uh, are available now and uh, I can mention here the acoustic emission and noise which allow uh, to obtain the information about fracture processes and deterioration crack propagation at the interface by measuring the acoustic emission and noise and another techniques uh, another technique which was developed in the middle of uh, 20th century which involves using of radioactive uh, materials to uh, to to introduce first in the uh, sliding interface and then by measuring radioactivity of the lubricating oil the d degree of wear and the wear rate can be monitored in situ and in operando however these uh, techniques does not do not provide any chemical information on the tribochemical processes so uh, the probably one of the most uh, useful solution for this situation is the use of mass spectrometry really this is not the new approach since mass spectrometry has been used uh, for characteriza for characterization of uh, em gas emission from uh, sliding interfaces for more than four decades however uh, many of these uh, techniques are not uh, mm, fine-tuned to uh, to exploit all the potential which has this uh, this technique so uh, the first mention of the phenomenon of gas emission by by friction probably uh, dated back to 1961 to one of the very famous uh, professor and researcher of uh, vacuum science professor Groszkowski who observed that when a glass ball uh, moved uh, inside a vacuum gauge the pressure went up and down and this uh, pressure variation corresponded exactly with the motion of the ball he supposed that uh, this phenomenon is caused by local frictional heating at the at the interfaces later on in 1965 and independently on professor Groszkowski professor de Segovia also observed pressure variation in a vacuum in a glass vacuum system when a sample was manipulated and this caused some uh, rubbing of copper against copper or copper against uh, glass surfaces however uh, this phenomenon has not been studied uh, in more details uh, so far by these researchers so uh, after several decades of investigation by several groups it can be concluded that uh, the tribe emission of gases includes several main sources the first uh, of them is emission of atoms and clusters of the material subjected to rubbing so the material is uh, rubbed and the, the small uh, parts of this material particles and clusters can be emitted by friction uh, by friction process the second one is desorption of the topmost adsorbed layers uh, imagine you have uh, a, a, a layer of water sort on a metal surface and by rubbing this metal surface a part of this uh, water uh, layer is desorbed and this can be observed as uh, gas emission the third one is desorption of gases which are dissolved or occluded in the volume of the material so deformation of uh, material and uh, also to some extent heating of material by friction can lead to uh, emission of these gases which uh, existed uh, in the in the volume of the material and finally and that is the most interesting for this uh, presentation is that the gases can be generated during and after rubbing due to tribochemical reactions
so uh, to measure the small uh, gas emission um, caused by rubbing you need to have a, a adequate experimental system which should be principally vacuum system but this is not the limitation you also can do this in atmosphere although with less sensitivity for very small gas emission so typically the vacuum system uh, is where you place your uh, tribometer and where the uh, quadrupole mass spectrometer or other, other type of mass spectrometer situates and you can measure the emission gas emission by this device uh, what is very important is that the uh, the, UH, the UHV system, ultra high vacuum system, should uh, reach very low pressure, so you will have very low background, and you can distinguish the pressure increase due to friction very easily and with high ac accuracy. The second uh, important part is to use dynamic gas expansion system. Uh, this will allow to quantify very accurately the emission rates of different gases so what uh, really you need to have is uh, the emission chamber where the gases are emitted from the sample subjected to rubbing and the expansion system uh, separated by a diaphragm with a small orifice which is typically of several millimeters in diameter in diameter mm typically between 8, 10, uh, 12 millimeters in diameter and so the gases uh, which are emitted from the sample are expanded from this uh, orifice uh, to the expansion chamber and by the difference in the pressure and knowing the conductance of this orifice mm, the rate of uh, emission can be determined very accurately following uh, these uh, cinetic equations also what is very important is to be sure that the gases which you measure comes out from the sample, from the interface between the sample and the indenter and not from any other part of the system. So uh, the system should be designed uh, to avoid this uh, parasitic uh, gas emission from the supports like in this uh, system which we developed. So we have all these uh, guides and uh, ball bearing outside vacuum system and they are connected through the bars for the shafts and we have here uh, sealed uh, se ceiling uh, billows which separates uh, atmosphere from vacuum and inside we only have one mechanical part one sliding interface which is between the indenter and the sample also it is necessary to use mass spectrometry to, to distinguish between various uh, emitted species and also it is necessary to apply correct models to obtain uh, the information on the uh, to identify these uh, species and also to obtain the information about the chemical reactions lying behind this uh, emission process well uh, identifying the emi this emission species is not really an easy task as many uh, researchers uh, may think and uh, I would like to first mention the uh, Morris classic study where he used uh, uh, the system uh, shown on the previous, uh, uh, previous page uh, to uh, study uh, trebochemical formic acid conversion on steel surface under friction. So he used uh, the formic uh, acid vapors introduced into vacuum system uh, when the uh, rotation of the table started the friction started so the pressure of the formic acid decreased and also synchronously uh, the pressure of CO2 which is the product of this reaction increased and by analyzing this uh, dy dynamics by correction uh, of by the pressure of the formic acid he showed that the corrected CO2 is the rate of CO2 production per mole of uh, formic acid is constant so this uh, clearly demonstrated that the uh, chemical process is constant on time and depends 
on the concentration of the uh, reactants uh, to give uh, the uh, reaction product as CO2 and H2. And this, this approach was uh, recently applied to different uh, systems, to different liquid and solid lubricants. Uh, however, many researchers do not pay attention to how really the identification can be done. So in many cases, in uh, many published uh, uh, papers, it is easy to find uh, such data where you uh, can see that the mass spectrum channel uh, with the mass uh, number, uh, mass, to num mass to charge ratio 15 is directly assigned to CH3, but CH3 is hardly can be emitted as a gas. So this corresponds to CH3 mass ion uh, measured by uh, mass spectrometer and also the uh, it should be mentioned that uh, the mass 15 can correspond to different uh, species why not ammonium and NH is a possible ion with mass 15 which can be emitted in such uh, systems with in such system where uh, CN and H are present so you should not you, you it is not possible to identify the emitted uh, molecules only by mass to charge ratio and the same situation with a ton emission uh, which is shown which is uh, all, uh, easily uh, assigned to the mass uh, to charge ratio 26 of mass spectrometer or 28 uh, mass spectrometer but this also can be uh, uh, ion coming from methylamine or some other compounds. So this uh, simplistic approach can lead to a significant error. And also in, other, in another study, uh, you study of the uh, ionic liquids, uh, also very simplistic where the, the peak, very small peak at mass uh, 34 was assigned to uh, sulfur hydride, however, there is also a uh, isotope of sulfur with mass 30, uh, 34 which can appear on the mass spectrum and the abundance uh, of this uh, isotope is 5% so it is not negligible and can be measured by mass spectrometer and this should be uh, taken into account and when you uh, suggest that the, some of the components of the mass spectrum should be assigned to some certain ion you should demonstrate all the possible ions coming from the same molecule all these uh, ions should be present you should not uh, say that uh, this corresponds to CF3 if other fragments are not demonstrated because uh, none of these uh, fragments can come alone uh, from the same molecule so uh, uh, to identify the emitted uh, species, there are certain challenges uh, in using mass spectrometry. Uh, here you can see the uh, three main challenges, which are highly dynamic emission, uh, which uh, may have bursts and uh, transients. So uh, by measuring uh, the different mass to charges, ions with different masses, uh, consequently, as uh, usually all mass spectrometers do, you can lose the information about uh, the dynamic process because when you measure, we start you measuring, the uh, the process has some feature, and when you end measuring, uh, some burst can appear. So, the beginning and the end of the same mass uh, spectrum will not correspond to this to the same process so it should be mm, analyzed with very carefully and uh, much attention should be paid to the time resolution of the processes and to select the uh, appropriate uh, time um, parameters of mass spectrometer measurements also another problem is that the composition of gases is unknown so it is difficult to assign the ions in the spectrum to the certain molecules if you do not know the exact composition since many molecules can give uh, the same ions you need to analyze the mass spectrum as a whole and not just selecting 
one channel and assigning this channel to certain uh, to certain molecule. And another uh, serious problem is that when you mm, subject the material to rubbing, you can produce also radicals, and radicals mm, can modify the mass spectrum so mm, it should be uh, analyzed very carefully to be sure that mm, the spectrum of uh, some molecule include all the components in correct proportion and that there is no contribution from radicals and if you see this contribution so it can give you very valuable information which cannot be obtained by other techniques uh, and this information can be obtained in situ and uh, and operando. So what we uh, our advancement in this field were to develop new approaches, which consist in uh, development of the procedure procedure for correlation and statistical analysis of mass spectrometry signals of all ionized uh, fragments, is um, aggregation of mass spectrometry by the time uh, type of time series behavior so we analyze not only the peaks on the mass spectrum but also we analyze the behavior of time series so and we can uh, distinguish uh, which can help us to distinguish uh, to which molecule correspond uh, each uh, ionic component and finally we can also analyze the time constant of transient processes which uh, provides very valuable information and uh, accurate quantification. Well, uh, if we need to analyze what are the, the composition of the emitted gases, so we need to analyze the mass spectrum and compare this mass spectrum with uh, standard relative abundances of ions or standard mass spectrum which can be obtained, for example, from NIST or some other uh, databases. Here you can see on the left, you can see uh, the uh, standard standard uh, mass spectrum for different gases such as uh, hydrogen, methane, ethane, CO, argon and so on and so on. And you can see here the relative abundances uh, which uh, for example for CH4 uh, the main peak is uh, mass 16 and then the peak at mass 15 should be about 89% of the height of the peak 16 and so on. So uh, if you have the, uh, the mixture of these gases, you will have the superposition of different mass spectrum uh, multiplied by certain uh, coefficient, which is proportional to the concentration of uh, each gases in the mixture. Well, uh, first of all, uh, how we can use this uh, mass, mass uh, spectra for analyzing if there is some emission of radicals in the uh, presence of radicals in the in the main gas for example in this case uh, this is a study of emission of gases from uh, hydrogenated uh, amorphous carbon where the peak of methane uh, was uh, quite intensive uh, but also it is not discarded since the mechanism of uh, emission is bond breaking between C and uh, methyl group so this methyl radical can also escape and theoretically it can be found in the emission gases. So how can we uh, pr uh, probe the presence of these uh, radicals in the emitted gases? The first of all we need to find the correlations, correlationships between the different channels of mass spectra corresponding to methane. Uh, so we need to find Ex uh, experimentally, this, uh, we need to make this uh, plot of different uh, channels, channels from tw 12 to 15, uh, respective of uh, channel 16. And this gives us, this uh, linear fitting fits give us directly, the, uh, the slope of this fit gives uh, us directly the relationships uh, between the masses uh, selected uh, in relationship with uh, mass 16. So in this case uh, we, have uh, we had four different samples with different hydrogen concentration, with different technology of deposition and uh, we uh, measured these relationships between the uh, 
intensity of different uh, signals and uh, we compared it with the abundances of uh, the ions corresponding to the pure methane and what uh, it was found that in all cases these relationships were equal or smaller than the theoretical ones so this means that there are no evidences of uh, methyl radical triboemission. emission this is quite uh, clear from the chemical point of view since methyl radical is very active and uh, when it uh, finds uh, some neighbor molecule it can abstract hydrogen and so it will complete uh, its configuration and c will form a uh, methane molecule this is why we only can observe methane uh, in the spectrum of the emitted uh, gases when rubbing uh, carbon uh, carbon coatings uh, quite similar results were obtained in analyzing the mass spectra of uh, various ionic liquids and the, here you can see uh, the um, uh, compar comparison comparison between the uh, theoretical mass spectrum of methane which is the gray bar and uh, the corresponding uh, spectrum obtained uh, during triba emission from this uh, ionic uh, liquid with this cation with this dicationic ionic liquid with uh, imidazolium, imidazolium type and with uh, butyl side chains and um, uh, ethylene glycol uh, connection, uh, connection chain and so you can see here that uh, the relationship between mass 15 is very clear is very close to the theoretical one However, in masses uh, 12 and 14, there is a certain excess of ions in comparison with theoretical mass spectrum. What uh, does it mean? This means that if we have only methane, uh, we have, uh, if, if we had only methane, uh, this uh, relationship would be very similar to uh, standard uh, mass spectrum but the excess of these uh, ions means there is there is some contribution from different molecule and this molecule can be can be butyl uh, this also comes from the comparison of the channels 42 and 43 which correspond to the to this propyl uh, various uh, propyl uh, ions and uh, uh, experimentally we found that the uh, ratio of 42 to 43 was uh, 0.48 when the theoretical value should be 0.12 this means that there is excess of these uh, ions in comparison with the mass spectrum of, uh, of butane uh, which can indicate that there is also some emission of butyl radical and this butyl radical which uh, which has uh, two uh, methylene groups uh, can contribute to ma masses 12 and 14 which is the mass of the uh, methylene group not the methyl group and similar results also were obtained well not similar but uh, the similar analysis what was applied to the analysis of the CF and CHF emission what we did is uh, we plotted uh, two uh, mass spectrum for CF4 and CHF3 uh, correspondingly the gray and the black bars and the experimental uh, experimental uh, results from the uh, tribe emission of the same ionic liquid and uh, you can see here that uh, the experimental data do not correspond exactly to any of uh, these compounds but there is closer correspondence to CHF3 for example uh, in this case with the mass 51 uh, which means that uh, uh, in contrast to the general belief that there is uh, emission of CF3 and formation of CF, uh, CF4 uh, the 
there is some uh, there is a bond breaking uh, between carbon and sulfur and this cf free radical then abstract uh, abstracts hydrogen from from environment from somewhere and then form ch3 which is then ionized in the mass spectra mass spect uh, sp spectrometer and then gives us this uh, uh, spectrum which can we can analyze so our conclusion was that it is definitely uh, there is definitely presence of ch3 rather than cf4 cf4 probably can can exist but the dominating uh, concentration is of ch3 so these uh, possible reactions uh, were explained like uh, the first absor adsorption of uh, anion on the hydroxided uh, zirconium oxide uh, and then uh, this HF and then this um, anion, adsorbed anion and the mechanical action can lose this uh, CF free group which will which can react with HF uh, or with some uh, other uh, compounds and uh, produce CF4 or CHF3. Uh, in many cases, uh, the mass spectrum is uh, of triboemitted gases is so complex that it is very difficult uh, to analyze it. This is especially uh, the case for polyethylene, polyethylene glycol compounds, which uh, produce uh, a number of different uh, products. Uh, with very similar uh, ionization mass spectrum uh, spectra so uh, the same ion can uh, belong to more than one uh, different compounds and this makes the analysis very diff diff difficult so uh, we suggested the next uh, approach to help us to separate uh, the, mole uh, the ions identify these ions and assign them to uh, different uh, emitted molecules. And this uh, uh, method consists in analysis of time series. So uh, if we see the time series of different uh, mass spectrometric channels, we can see that the behavior is quite different. So if we, can, if we group the channels by behavior, we can see that mm, they mm, definitely uh, show us uh, that they can correspond to certain uh, certain molecules so how uh, this can be analyzed first uh, the behavior mode should be identified which uh, here are called uh, denoted by different uh, Greek letters then uh, the different groups should be made up according to the same behavior and then it is very important to analyze this raising and falling edges and uh, how which, what information can be drawn from this analysis well the first you can see that in this case these uh, two channels correspond to CF3 and CHF uh, CH4 uh, CF sorry <laughs> CF4 uh, and CHF3 uh, so uh, you can see that there is a very steep rise at the beginning and very steep uh, fall of the signal just when the rubbing stops. So this means that there is instantaneous emission with mechanical action. Uh, in case of uh, alkyl emission, which correspond to mass spectrometer, spectrometer channels 14 and 15, you can see also very abrupt increase of the signal at just at the beginning of sliding but then the decrease is not so steep so this indicates that we change uh, the system I mean the system means the surface and the ionic liquid and then these changes still produce uh, the emission and this emission can be due to desorption can be due to diffusion or due to relaxation of some active species which contribute to the generation of these uh, of these gases and uh, the most interesting uh, case is of this uh, type uh, alpha uh, which corresponds to sulfur oxides and you can see it is very slow increase it's very slow kinetics 
and all the same very slow kinetics uh, at the end of rubbing. This is this is a clear indication that the process of CO of COX emission is not directly related with rubbing. It's not bo bond breaking uh, by rubbing like in the case of CF emission, but in this case we have clearly a secondary process or uh, process which occur which occurs in more than one step. The first step can be uh, bond breaking, alteration, some kind of alteration of surface, generation of active sites, and then the secondary reaction takes place, and this secondary reaction gives rise uh, to uh, emission of uh, sulfur oxide. To distinguish between uh, these instantaneous and uh, retarded reactions, it is very important to analyze the leap at the end of uh, rubbing. You can see in this graph, for example, this leap is approximately half of intensity. This means that the instantaneous uh, contribution of instantaneous process is approximately half of the total emission and another half is retarded emission which can be related to the secondary processes. In the case of uh, CF-free uh, emission, almost all emissions emission comes from the instantaneous process. So uh, as a conclusion for this, uh, uh, for this page, we can uh, say that there are different thermochemical processes which, are, which can be instantaneous, like bond uh, rupture, uh, which is characterized by the leap at the end of rubbing, and also it can be generation of active species or sites and secondary reactions, diffusion, desorption, which uh, lie behind uh, the retarded emission. Then, uh, when we, uh, from uh, these analyses, when, when we identified the approximately the composition of the possible molecules which can be emitted, then we should apply this mathematical uh, model to a statistical model to determine the contribution, the concentration of each of these components. Uh, using these uh, matrix equations. In this case, the A is the standard uh, mass uh, spectrum obtained from NIST, and P is uh, sorry, uh, and P is the measured uh, mass spectrum. So by applying this equation, you can get the concentration of the components which you model. So the first, you need to make the model. You need to suppose the composition of the emitted gases and then you apply this uh, uh, this mathematics and you get the uh, concent relative concentration of these components but uh, maybe uh, you are wrong in the your model so you need to check uh, you need to uh, make up different models and need uh, to apply this mathematics various times and to check the quality of the fitting, the quality of this uh, data. And uh, for example, here, this uh, data correspond to the mass spectra of gases emitted from uh, uh, carbon samples. And you can see that the best uh, fitting uh, fit was uh, obtained for this, for this model, including six components. And if you withdraw uh, several components, you can the uh, um, the fit is not so not so good, and if only two of the gases are used, so the quality of fit uh, decreases. So you need to find you need to select the model which gives you the best uh, result uh, using the step uh, uh, forward and back and uh, backward elimination procedure. Then you finally decide you select it which model is the most adequate to your situation, you can quantify and determine the uh, emission rate using uh, the time series and the parameters, time series of mass spectrometric uh, channels and the parameters of the system such as the volume and the conductance of the diaphragm or orifice. And then you obtain final results, which are desorption rates can be which can be expressed in uh, 
uh, SI uh, units or in uh, moles per second, for example. And here you have the results for two uh, for four samples from D1 to D4 carbon coatings, and you can hear uh, you can see here these uh, results in moles per cubic centimeter and in and SI. And now I would like to show you how this uh, met methodology was used uh, in studying of uh, carbon coatings, uh, ionic liquids and uh, friction modifiers. So as I told uh, you before, uh, we characterized uh, tri-emission from four coatings. The, all of them are amorphous carbon coatings with uh, quite high hydrogen content between approximately 15 and uh, 44 percent and uh, these coatings were obtained by IBD and PCVD uh, processes with uh, using different precursors and uh, using argon gas in some cases and here you can see the uh, tribal emission spectra uh, obtained for each coating you can see there is clear uh, correlation between the concentration of hydrogen in the coating and the intensity of hydrogen and methane uh, signals in the mass spectrum. With increasing uh, the hydrogen concentration in the coating, we see dramatic increase in the hydrogen peak and also increase in the CH4 intensity. Uh, so uh, it can be, uh, it was concluded that uh, the generation of these gases should be by uh, uh, bond breaking uh, due to due to shearing and recombination of the uh, radicals uh, with uh, hydrogen or CH uh, molecules which give rise to emission of methane and hydrogen. What is interesting also is that uh, the behavior of uh, methane, the relationship between methane and the hydrogen emission is not linear. So the more hydrogen we have in the coating, the higher is the ratio hydrogen to methane. Here you can see the, uh, this uh, cross-correlation graph for methane versus hydrogen for the D3 and D4 coating. This is the maximum hydrogen concentration. This is the second uh, the second hydrogen concentration. So you can see at the beginning the ratio is close to one, one uh, mole of uh, methane to one mole of uh, hydrogen, but during friction it decreases and we have 10 times more methane than hydrogen. In case of highly hydrogenated coating it is uh, more stable uh, with uh, friction uh, duration and it is uh, it can be found between uh, 0.4 and 3 ratio uh, this means that the there is much higher uh, relative concentration of hydrogen than methane in this case and this uh, corresponds well with uh, FTIR analysis of the of the um, uh, samples uh, which shows us that in the case of D4 uh, sample, uh, these and this spectra, we have high concentration of uh, methyl group and also of uh, chain, C uh, chain uh, methylene group. This means that we have more uh, polymeric structure of the coating than in case of D3, where we have higher uh, contribution from sp2 carbon. So uh, the larger number of CH3 groups we have, the higher, concent the higher intensity of methane, and so the high probability that uh, two hydrogen form the molecule and this molecule will escape from the substrate. Also, it was interesting that only in the case of highly, highly hydrogenated carbon coating, we also found a small contribution from ethane and uh, propane and this can be explained by the re reaction between neighboring uh, CH3 groups. So we need very high concentration of uh, methyl, uh, terminate uh, methyl group at the, and at the surface so that by shearing we can uh, break the bonds and uh, 
this uh, methyl group, uh, methyl radical can recombine not with only hydrogen but also with CH3 group and to form ethane and probably also the propane. In case of ionic liquid, the uh, analysis of the mass spectrometric spectrometric data is much more complex since we have m m much uh, more uh, components in the mass spectrum. Uh, so in this case we applied uh, this uh, Pearson correlation uh, model and we developed this uh, table which shows you the correlation uh, coefficient of correlation between different masses. And from the analysis, from the uh, careful analysis of this data uh, you can find some compounds which uh, are not uh, which cannot be supposed only from the chemistry of the ionic liquids for example these uh, two strong uh, correlation uh, signals two strong correlation between the mass 30 and 15 and 16 can indicate probably that there is some uh, methylamine emission a methylamine emission is quite strange since we have nitrogen in the midazolium and also we have nitrogen in the anion group and it is known that the midazolium is hardly can be uh, opened opened the the ring of imidazolium hardly can be opened by friction so it is probably there is some reaction between this uh, nitrogen coming from the anion with some uh, alkyl uh, or radical coming from the side chains of the cation and these types of reactions have not been reported so far and this is very interesting uh, to observe that there, are, there, are, there is probably some uh, chemical reactivity between the products of cation and anion turbochemical degradation decomposition so the process of uh, degradation is very complex and it's mainly uh, decomposition and depolymerization of polyethylene glycolic chain and detachment of the side butyl chain uh, which can be observed as uh, this uh, this part is the emission of butyl uh, this uh, the mass spectrum of the butyl part and the, the glycolic part but uh, the detail analysis of other uh, mm, uh, other data can uh, shed light uh, on possible other types of reaction which uh, have not been studied uh, uh, carefully so far. Uh, what I told you uh, before, what we found uh, uh, from the analysis of this uh, spectra is that there are probably also emission between sulfonic uh, group and uh, other products of reactions, uh, decomposition like CHF3 and uh, probably this uh, methyl uh, radicals so which uh, give rise to the formation of these probable, probable uh, compounds. We do not know exactly which compound is but the mass spectrum of these three compounds have uh, some components which cannot be explained by other one. So we, fo we found in the mass spectrum uh, some uh, com components in the range of 50 and 60 which cannot be attributed to any other compound of the ionic liquid but it can indicate, it can uh, point at uh, the formation of these compounds which are products of the reactions of uh, the products of decomposition of uh, anionic and cationic uh, groups. And finally, very interesting result uh, which was obtained recently is uh, concerned uh, the tribochemical reaction in solid uh, lubricant uh, which is a composite of uh, molybdenum disulfide and uh, carbon nanotubes in vinyl ester matrix. This is a friction uh, composite friction modifier which is used for lubrication and controlling friction in uh, uh, in the contact between the rail and the wheel in uh, railways and uh, what we found is here you can see in this graph is the comp uh, comparison of uh, the uh, only vinyl ester matrix the blue bars and the fully uh, 
and the full uh, composite including uh, both uh, adjectives so you can see here the strong increase in the emission of sulfuric compounds such as uh, sulfur sulfur hydride sulfur oxide probably here we have this um, uh, comp com composition with uh, methyl and uh, also very interesting is the emission of CS2 and COS why is it uh, interesting uh, the matter is that under, f under um, uh, heating of carbon with sulfur or sulfur composite uh, these two compounds uh, have not been observed at any temperature uh, under heating and uh, thermal pyrolysis in vacuum or in atmosphere so this uh, means that under friction there are different types of chemical reactions which lead to formation of the bonds between carbon and sulfur and this probably comes uh, from the the carbon probably comes from the carbon nanotubes since we have here that after friction the carbon nanotube this uh, displacement of the the shift of the peak uh, indicates increase of disorder and increase of the number number of edges and the raman spectrometry also shows that the carbon uh, is uh, closely related the its position is closely related to the position of uh, sul uh, molybdenum sulfide crystals so it is clearly a reaction between carbon and uh, molybdenum sulfide which lead to formation of these CS uh, compounds the matter uh, the question now is can we find uh, some uh, CS solid compounds on the surface so we are still uh, working on this uh, topic and it's very interesting to for us uh, to know is the is there any influence is there any chemical modification of the surface by the combination of carbon and sulfur and sulfur and maybe this is another uh, and probably this uh, is a different tribochemical mechanism of the well-known um, uh, improvement of tribological properties by the combination of carbon and, uh, and sulfur. And finally I come to the conclusions. Uh, first, uh, tribo-emission of gases uh, has been proved being a powerful tool to prop tribochemical process in situ and in operando. So you can obtain information uh, by uh, during the mm, the during the experiment or even in the real system uh, if you have uh, some measuring uh, devices to measure the emission of gases the gas turbo emission allows identification of emitted molecular and radical species this is very important and very different from other conventional techniques also, we can uh, determine the underlying tribochemical processes by uh, analyzing the time series and uh, time constants of uh, retarded emission. So we can uh, identify which molecules uh, proceed from the bond rupture, from radical reaction, adsorption, etc. And uh, finally, the reaction rates can be accurately quantified, so we can obtain also quantified information. Thank you very much for your attention.